Ad and his friends often chatted about, you know, when the, the, they were younger and they were out camping and they'd run out of food and if they found a fresh lion kill, they would actually chase the lions off the kill and, and uh, take some of the meat for themselves. And uh, I think we must have been about 16 or 17. Uh, a whole group of us went camping in the Okavango Delta in, a, in one of the, the private concessions. And uh, we decided to test this theory that our parents had talked about so often about if you run at a lion shouting and waving a stick, the lion will run away. Now, if we'd been listening, which you don't tend to do in your teenage years, you think you're quite the expert in everything, uh, they say, of course you want a fresh kill from that day, you don't want something that's been there for three or four days unless you really are starving. So, uh, we found lions on a buffalo kill, but they probably made the kill an hour before, so they still weren't very fat and heavy. And it was about seven o'clock in the morning, so it was still quite cool, middle of winter. Uh, so normally what one would do if one wants to chase lions off a kill, wait till about 11 or 12 when it's hot, <laughs> and also wait for the lions to have a good feed before you, before you chase them off. And uh, we didn't. So at about 16, 17, we ran charging at these lions, shouting. Now the thing is, if you start charging a lion, there's no backing out. Because as soon as you turn around and go the other way, you become dinner. So basically we started running at these lions. Rah! And we're shouting and running at these lions, and and we st and oh, the other trick we missed is you should only start running from very close. So you sneak up and then give them a big fright. You don't run from 60 meters, which is what we did. And about six of us. <laughs> and you, I, th I could distinctly remember hearing the pitch of our voice change when when we'd run for about 50, or not, we'd run for about half the distance, so about 30 meters already, and the lions still weren't moving, they'd just gone flat. But now we know we can't stop, because if you stop, you're guaranteed to be in trouble. So, and eventually they only ran away when we got to about 15 meters from the carcass. We cut that piece of meat very quickly off the carcass and uh, tried not to run back to the car. Of course, you don't run, so we're walking like this. Um, of course, <laughs> you learn as you, as, as, as you get, get older. And uh, <laughs> at least we had buffalo back straps for, for, for lunch that day. And you know what? There's a reason you hang meat uh, and that's so it can be tenderized. So that, that buffalo bat strap was probably one of the toughest meals I've ever had. But we're gonna keep moving, we're gonna keep checking.